here we are. So, uh, grub worms up on the rack here. We got the engine took out of it, uh, making some updates for Florida 2K and World Cup. Uh, last year we had a lot of trouble with header flanges. Uh, the header flanges, obviously on the small block Chevy design, you can see this is an old head we ran here. Um, basically, the bolt holes go in really close to the exhaust ports. And then, of course, you've got two paired ports in the center with only two bolts holding the flange here. So if you compare it to like an LS engine or any other engine with symmetrical ports, you know, they would generally have two bolts supporting each port. So if there's a weakness we've discovered in these engines on the turbo setup making insane horsepower and boost, is just simply keeping the headers to stay sealed up. You know, with the heat, the back pressure, the flange is warped, then the gasket pushes out, and you know, it's just a, it's a constant battle for us, it seems. So what we've done is we had our guys here in the machine shop, uh, Matt, he did some custom flanges for the, for the headers. Uh, you can see our header here, uh, the current header, turn this around. If you compare, you can see we've added a bolt down here where this header had no bolt and otherwise it's just a lot thicker. So you can see this started life as a 3 8 but we've surfaced it so many times from you know warpage that you know it's even much thinner than that now. So you can, can see this is 5 8 so it's at least a quarter inch thicker everywhere. So hopefully the material difference, the thickness, plus the additional bolt hole, uh, the bolt holes are more precise. Hopefully all that will combine to a much better, more stable header flange. And, you know, we thought this previous year, I mean, we've changed the turbo kit basically every year because of this problem. Uh, the first turbo kit did good, but we didn't make a lot of power. We wanted to step the size of our tubing up, you know, just to see if that mattered. You know, it's all kind of experimentation. We went to a two inch primary and we thought that would make it stronger. Uh, and of course we thought the adapters would make it stronger. The whole flange set up instead of just being, you know, the, the bolts relative to the port. So obviously we did a lot of things to improve it, but it didn't improve it. <laughs> I mean, it may have to a small extent, but here we are. So we've made these flanges and you can see uh, if we held it to this head, there's no bolt holes, obviously. So what we're doing is we're eliminating an adapter. So the header flange, you know, has to bolt to a head where there's no holes. So of course we have to machine those holes. And you can see that not all heads would actually accept what we're doing because as you can see on this head, there's, there's not an entirely flat surface here to drill and tap additional holes. Like you would have a hole here, but the way it's cast, that you know, you just couldn't. But luckily with the, the Brodix heads that we've, we've been running, uh, this is a new set for our bow tie block, which we're gonna put back in the car at some point. But it has, the entire side is just one full machine surface. And it's kind of like they already even planned for this extra bolt hole because you can see here that the casting had a bump in it. So what we did is we made a fixture and this head's already been done Normally it would have just had these holes in the middle, just like this head. You know, this is still a conventional 23 degree small block Chevy head. But what we've done is we made a fixture and we drilled these holes to match this flange. So you hold the flange up there. And like I said, we even added a hole here that normally this pattern wouldn't have. Uh, Rock Solid Motorsports, Steven Eads down there. Those guys do a great job for us on the fab work. Not only do they do a great job, but they always fit me in at the last minute. He kind of jokes about that because it's like every time I decide to do something major like this, it's about one month before a big race. Now, this had to be done and it had to be done fast, not only because we need to park fast, but we got to give Steven and those guys down there some time to actually get it installed. We got a new 
billet advanced clutch is clutch installed now or in the process of getting it installed and so this is all new the clutches are different material so we don't really know what's going to happen but we're going to test it out this weekend and see if it's better than the old stuff we've been running and you can see some of the old stuff here if you want to look at it in comparison it's basically a a three lever design and of course this is stamped steel instead of billet and another thing that you have to maintain as everything wears down is the height of the the ring inside of here uh, basically the height of the pressure plate because when the discs get thinner you see the discs and the floater here as they wear down then you lose base load so eventually in the design of this one you would just take shim out from behind this stud you know which would go between this and the flywheel so as things wear you're you're just gonna keep reducing that shim to mount Sure. Two step. That's how you break one in, right? I mean, I guess that's how Thomas did it. <laughs> The LT1 we took out, we've got a bow tie block, it's an aftermarket 
small block Chevy block. Uh, the two engines are very similar. They're both uh, same deck height, which small block Chevy is basically a nine inch deck height. So same deck height, same oil pan, fits the bow tie block, which is why I went with the bow tie block. Uh, a lot of the aftermarket small block Chevy blocks, they use a different oil pan pattern or rail, the width. Um, that's so that you can have longer strokes, you know, fit a longer stroke crankshaft in your engine, but we're not all about that. We actually de-stroke our engine, you know, to make it really small cubes to kind of work with the, the, you know, the manual transmission and just keep trying to keep torque in check. So we bought a bow tie block, had the thing for a couple of years, just never put it in because the LT1 kept running so good. It's kind of like, you know, why, why change it while it's, while it's good? But last year, in the fall, we decided to go ahead and order rotating assembly parts for this engine. And we had plans to keep running the LT engine because when we initially tore everything down after World Cup, everything looked great. And we thought, well, man, this thing, we're just gonna slam it right back together. Same bearings, rings, everything, because it all looked just really that good. But when I started checking everything, we found that a couple of the cylinders were out around. You know, they, they had egg shaped a little bit which we thought was kind of odd because the piston still, you know, everything looked great. And at that point, I had had parts ordered for the bow tie, long, obviously longer than, you know, the LT needed to be bored. So we were gonna have to order more pistons for it to, you know, step our bore up to a 30 over. So that's how we actually came about putting the bow tie in, in the first place, which was for Texas 2K this year, our first event. And we ended up having a lot of, you know, just weird, crazy issues, that stuff we'd never seen before. Uh, had an issue with the way the pistons were made, which was just a mistake from the manufacturer. And of course, they, they got us straightened out super quick. We've had pistons you know, for this engine kind of all year, but again, it was a situation where the LT1 was back in the car. Uh, we did get our 30 over pistons and uh, we just put it back in. We had new heads ordered for this that we didn't have yet, some of those kinds of things. So finally uh, got everything. We kind of been waiting on some valve train parts for a long time. All that stuff just finally came together and we decided to, to put it back in the car and, and uh, you know, hit the last couple of big events with this engine because we feel like it will be the better engine. I mean, it's comparing an aftermarket block to a stock block essentially and uh, bigger bore. So the bigger bore allows us to go with a, a cylinder head that has you know, larger valves without shrouding the valve. Uh, the intake port's a little bigger on this head than the, the LT engine. Uh, it's a, this is a 245cc intake runner compared to a 233 that we've been running. And then this, this engine also has a fresh cam from Smallwood Race Development, Martin. Uh, he's spec the last couple of cams we've ran. Uh, the LT actually this year has been running the old first cam that we ever had because in Texas we actually tore the cam up when we had our valve train issues and piston issues and everything else. So this is a new cam from Smallwood. Uh, it's a larger cam than we've ever ran. And you know, basically uh, improvement with the cylinder heads, which should flow better, the, the valve size, the runner size, the cam, uh, all that's an effort just to make the engine spin more RPM because we're at the point where we really can't go any taller with our rear gear. We're a 340 gear, it's a pro gear nine inch. So to physically go faster, we're just you know gonna have to spend more RPM. So hopefully this set up everything with spec with the intention to turn it, you know, 93, 9400, maybe 9500 if we have to. Uh, last year's engine we turned it pretty much all season to 9100. So it, and and uh, this like I said this can this engine every, everything about this engine should be better at the higher RPM. We got high hopes, I guess. Hopefully the, the bow tie block will prove to be as strong as the LT block has been for us.